story about a boy in a tricycle, originally told by Rabbi Harold Kushner. A little boy comes home late for supper, and his mom is really worried and asks, why were you so late? And he says, well, mom, on the way home, I saw another little boy crying because his tricycle was broken. There was a wheel that fell off, and so I stopped and I helped him. And she said, you helped him fix a tricycle? Well, that's great. What do you know about, how do you know how to fix a tricycle? He said, no, no, mom, I didn't, I didn't fix the tricycle. I sat on the curb and I, I helped him cry. Acceptance is a beautiful word. Being able to accept life on life's term. Forgiveness, a little more difficult. Forgiving life for life being the way it is. I think it's a little easier for children to deal with concepts of acceptance and forgiveness than it is for us as adults. In fact, there's that nursery rhyme that we were all told as kids, row your boat, row your boat gently down the stream. There are six or seven verses of that nursery rhyme. The last one I discovered goes like this. Row your boat, watch the water flow. Like, rowing is fun, but rowing's hard. This is what I know. Rowing's fun, but rowing's hard. This is what I know. I was, I was teaching a Zoom class a few days ago with some students from Penn State University, and one of them asked me, Scott, do you think life is fair? I think that if he and the other students, we would remember or have ever been, had ever been taught that final verse, we would understand that life isn't fair. Life is fun and life is hard. This is what I know. Michael Callan was one of the longest surviving people with HIV and AIDS in the mid 80s, early 90s, and he wrote a book called Surviving AIDS, where he traveled around the country and asked other long-term survivors at the time what it was that they, he, they think was keeping them alive. This is before the advent of antiretroviral therapy that we now know works. And he discovered that the one thing they all had in common was that while they treated their virus a little differently, medicine, medication, uh, meditation, whatever it was, they all believed that the virus was real. They accepted the diagnosis. There was, at the same time, a virologist named Peter Duisberg who did not believe that HIV leads to AIDS and that AIDS leads to death. And he convinced a lot of people to follow his way and all of those followers died of AIDS. I got infected with HIV in 1987. When I got my diagnosis six months later, the, the counselor gave me my results and said, I'm sorry, but it's positive. And I thought, well, I thought many things. First, my mom. Second, my dad. Third, I heard a voice, or in fact, it was more like I felt a prompt. I saw a word cloud over my head of words that formed into a poetic sentence that went something like, are you ready? The question was, are you ready to stop running from death? Are you ready to stop running from life? Acceptance, sitting on the curb, bowing your head and saying, ah, now this. Soon after I got my HIV results, I joined a support group where we would sit and talk for weeks, months, years, decades about living with, and some of us dying from AIDS. And anytime somebody would come in with a question, the facilitator would answer the same way. Sai would say, ah, now this, but I'm so afraid I'm gonna die of AIDS. Here we all are, but I don't know what to do. And all this is a part of all that is. Surrender only to this moment, to this life, to this day. My friend George Melton was dying of AIDS and before he did, he wrote a book called Beyond AIDS. And I pulled it off the bookshelf and I wanted to share it with you and I realized I'd never actually read the inscription, the dedication. And in it he writes, this book is lovingly dedicated to all those facing a fatal diagnosis, and who have been given a death sentence. That's all of us. 
Every single one of us from the moment we're born have been given a death sentence. The question is, what are you gonna do about it? And with George, he said this, when I got my diagnosis, my AIDS diagnosis, I asked myself, how will I respond in such a way that I experience growth? that I experience growth from this. Instead of thinking, why is this happening to me? He is saying, why is this happening for me? Where can I grow? How can I learn? What can I do that will make my life bigger? And he writes, the answer would be a willingness to accept and forgive in every moment. I choose to face this experience, he says, by receiving the message it brings, forgiveness and acceptance of every person on this planet. But how do we get to the place of forgiveness? Well, that's a tall order. It takes a long time. My friend John Fletcher Harris, who died of AIDS in the 90s, used to say, forgiveness comes when it comes, if it comes. Forgiveness takes time. But I want you to think about this sweet, simple sentence. Right now, in this very moment, please remember that everybody you meet, including yourself, is doing the best that they can. So when you see someone who's angry, forgive. When you hear someone who's scared, love. And when you are that person that doesn't know what to do, accept. Accept and keep your heart open. In our support group, we also would say, when anybody had an issue, Take every opportunity that comes your way as a chance to show up for life in a more compassionate way. How can we be more compassionate people? The more I forgive, the more I love. And the more I love, the more I live. Keep your heart open. Surrender to this moment, this moment only. My friend Tom is a pastor of a church where one of his congregants became infected with COVID-19. He then got infected from her and then infected his wife and his children. And when asked, what will you do when you see her for the first time, when the world opens up again and you actually can go back to church? And she's there. And he said, the first thing I'll do is wrap my arms around her and forgive her. The more I forgive, the more I love. The more I love, the more I live. I teach a class at Colby College called AIDS and the Meaning of Life. I ask my students as their final assignment to write a letter to a child who died of AIDS in the early 90s at the height of the AIDS epidemic in America. Children who didn't live to the age of 10 or 11 and the assignment is to tell that child in the letter what their life would have been like if they had stayed alive, effectively asking my students to consider what their life can be like. There's a difference between living the life you want and living the life you've got. Perhaps, maybe even in accepting the life you've got, you have a chance to live the life you want. So here's a compilation of some of what they wrote to these children. If you were still here, here is what I would tell you. Fill your life with love and chocolate and friends and family and heartbreak. Fill your life with heartbreak because the world is both extremely terrifying and exquisitely beautiful. Enjoy the little things in life frequently and make the most of every day. Oh, and do me a favor. Try not to be an asshole. Just learn to love people early and forgive people daily and accept people fully. Being human is complicated and it is overwhelming, but that's what makes it so astounding. Love people early. Forgive people daily. Accept people fully. In this moment, surrender only. And row your boat gently.